this. Mm-hmm. So it says we're live, but I don't trust any technology. I don't believe in technology. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'm going to check to see if we're really live. Yeah. Dude, sure. we are live. I think. Yeah, I think we're live. Um, mm-hmm. Man, it's so wonderful to see you. Yeah, man, it really is. Man, it's been so long. Like, I know. Like when I look at the time frame, it's almost been like almost a year and a half, almost, right? Has it been really? Yeah, I think so. Like, like we used to like catch up at the gym and stuff, and like have conversations. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. After that, we just like I, I kind of stopped going to the gym. Like it was, uh, I was like I'm gonna do more outside workouts and like not stay inside. So is that what you've been doing, really? Yeah, I've been really yeah, I've been like staying more like just running and just like keeping up with that, and also um, yeah, just like more more body weight calisthenic stuff even before like COVID and everything happened so i've been always doing that yeah yeah i can't do that i don't do that stuff actually i'm going to start doing it and i'm going to introduce everybody to far in, in just a moment but i am actually going to start doing that tomorrow uh did you know that there's like an underground type of thing in new york city where there's a lot of gyms that are open and you just have to like know someone and like knock on the door and tell them the code you know about that I was seeing some shit like that. Like I was like, I was like going around like the city and I'm like walking around like, and then I just see like these like crazy, like CrossFit stuff, like everybody doing these like weird park stuff. And then there's also like this on, yeah, I was hearing one of my friends say like this one guy that was like a manager at Equinox, like found a way to like have these underground like gym sessions with like mass. Yeah, no, these gyms are open. Like I'm not going to say what the name's Nancy. Did you need something? Yeah. You just have to like click it. You'll see refresh. So Nancy's going to watch this. You just met Nancy for the first time. So my wife's going to be in another room watching because then we we'll be like, how'd I do? So um, I will just tell you this and I want you to introduce yourself. So I found out today, I saw an old buddy of mine from the same gym, right? And he looked fantastic. So uh, uh, I asked him, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You know, you look fantastic. And, he's, and then he tells me that there's like a secret gym. And apparently throughout New York City, there's like all these secret gyms that people go to and uh, you've got to give them like a code and you give them a couple of dollars. I mean, I feel pretty cool. I feel awesome. I know. It's I, feel so like now, I feel like now <laughs> I want to. Prohibition, prohibition gym era that we're in. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but I feel like now I want to tell everybody about it and then tell them that I've got like the secret to it because then they're like, can I do it? And I'm like, no, you can't. It's a secret. I feel pretty cool about that. So um, Farhan, uh, really, really wonderful to see you. It's been so long, man. And uh, it really has, man. Like, and, like all, all some of the best conversations I had, like nearby in the neighborhood, all came from you. Like always meeting, like always having some insightful, like mindset on, like, I, like just like, like in general, like even throughout, like the, I was telling you a bit earlier, like, like during like COVID and everything, I knew like you would have like the most insightful takes on it, rather than just like go with like some herd mentality and just like. Like just go with what the crowd's saying. You're like the first person. Like, oh no, this is bullshit. Like, we should look at it in this way, in that way. So, so respect did you that. did you know I've got a log that I keep a daily log? Yeah, yeah, I was reading on that log. Like, like just like because it's so easy to like like all these news articles that they just get piled on top of each other. And I was reading like all like the just just the way like people change the whole dialogue of everything and the way you kept track of it is awesome. Well, I spent, you haven't seen it yet. You know, I, I showed a little bit of it online, but that was version one. So the one I'm up to now is like version five or something. And uh, you haven't seen it. Uh, I think only so far, Darren Beatty, I think is the only person. Cause I like bombarded him. We did like a video chat between he and I, and I just like overwhelmed him and I showed him everything. Um, and it was kind of like uh, Mike Tyson. I was like Mike Tyson bombarding him with all this type of stuff. But I, I mean, I was doing it today for four hours right before we started this. And today I'm explaining testing. So I've got this huge timeline of, mm-hmm. of everything in the US and then what the number of tests are and the cumulative number of tests and why things messed up. And a, a friend of mine's on here uh, right now. He goes by Man Integrated, but I think he's got another name here. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be speaking with him tomorrow about how China seems to have robbed the supply chain. So I'm really excited about that. So uh, would you mind just introducing yourself? Would that be all right? Of course, yeah. Um, so basically, like, a quick background is, like, um, I kind of, like, just, just, like, the whole, like, pat, like, just being unorthodox has always been, like, my whole, like, like, little niche in life. Like, I started, like, interning at a bunch of tech companies during, like, 
start of like high school and towards the end of high school i dropped out basically out of high school just like the last year of high school i was just like completely like done with like school in general and just never going there just interning like doing a lot of like my first role was at this one company called um bubble.is they're kind of big now they're like they're like they're like doing this whole no code movement which is like kind of taking like the whole valley and in general the whole tech community by storm so i was there for a while and that, this was back when i was around like 16 17 and then just started like working in engineering, just learning all about all, as much as I can, just building things and just learning in general and like working on things in product. And I just joined as a founding engineer at this one company called Carbon 12 Lab. And over there, like just being the founding engineer, just having all these hats at like such like, I would say a young age, like I would say like 20, like 19, 20 is kind of young and just like doing like all these like, uh, like things that like while my peers were all like at college and stuff, I was like helping out building a startup. We raised like 2 million and just yeah just like grinded out that for like a year and a couple months until i got completely burned out and um and after I, so i saw a comment that said i'm coming in kind of low on audio so i'm like gonna like hold the mic <laughs> slow down, slow down just a tiny bit and slow down just a tiny bit because okay, every sorry, word sorry. matters every word matters yeah, okay. yeah so so yeah basically um yeah we raised like two million and just started grinding for a year and a couple months and after doing that just got burnt out so much just decided like you know what i'm gonna i'm like done with the whole like startup world for a while i'm just gonna take some time off i just turned 20 i was like i'm gonna start traveling i'm gonna like travel everywhere in the world that's when i started like having conversations with you and like we were like talking about like um like exploring india and going to all types of areas and yeah, yeah. and then like traveling and then traveled like right like during the whole pandemic like i was traveling so it's like pretty crazy oh, like, while awesome. it was like, raging while it was all like raging in china and stuff i was like near the epicenters and stuff so it's really crazy um yeah that that was like a big portion of like early 2020 for me until like all this travel ban start stuff happened i came back to the city so now yeah. i'm surrounded back in the city and what are you doing right now um right now yeah i was like having some conversations with some people at like some um t like at the um teal fellowship there's like um uh, she, she's really dope her name's um danielle strashman she like like has like um basically like it's it's a spin-off of like the whole teal fellowship in general of, like not going to school and like building companies and they have oh. this like grant system yeah it's oh, like I, you know i love that stuff man awesome. oh, yeah, I, I really i really think like more stuff like that should be put out especially for like people in the young because like the thing about like college is always like a is like either this or there's nothing else like like peter teal says that either you go to yale or you go to jail like there's like there's like no other alternative but there's so many alternatives in like the modern era of just like the internet and using like it's just like learning in general like there's like so much um so much information out there just the will to learn is not exactly out there currently but if there's just ways if people understand how how like learning can be done in other ways i think the will to learn for especially the younger generation will come in and it'll be like amazing, like just seeing like this whole boom and like new talent coming in that don't that don't really require schooling in general, like maybe just being an autodidact. So your peers, um, are they in agreement with you about college? Um, yeah, the thing is, um, not really. Like most of the people that are around my age, like I've like like a lot a lot of people like around my friend group are not really in, in my age age range, but the people that I do keep track of, they're still in college right now. The whole like like i think the thing is like college is kind of like a cult in a way like uh, like you're always like told like this is the right way and if not like everyone else is against you so like they're always if you if you bat if you battle them on that front they're already completely in this whole mindset that even if it's online i'm still gonna they're still paying full tuition for like an online course which makes oh, no. it makes no sense to me like if you're gonna have an online course you might as well take a year off take that like 50,000 you're going to pay for the year and just see what you could build, see who you could hire, see like, like you could, there's so much great talent on Upwork, so much great talent on everywhere that you could like learn in Udemy. You could like have all these courses. So do you think, I'm sorry, can I interrupt you? Would that yeah. be all right? Cause you could just keep going. Right. And that's awesome. Uh -huh. uh, no, and I'm just, so, yeah. And I'm just so, I'm, I'm like the same way and I'm just so excited to see it. So, um, but I'm actually really curious about that because I hate college. I don't think college makes sense for anybody. I think kind of, I think it's kind of like a scheme. Um, you know, I uh, I kind of backfilled my education, right? I got my job first, and I wish more people would do the same thing. So um, when you get out, uh, when your friends get out of school, is going to be what, like three years or two years? And yeah, I, I think two years. Two years. Is and then do they get an advanced degree? Now? Um, they so the way like I was looking at like I was asking them like how they they're, they're most likely interning and stuff so they're still like working and getting like 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 a lot of my friends that are in school right now are currently like studying computer science or STEM field so it's, it's still a great like 
in general like i think stem is always going to be a good degree to study but like like nowadays you could definitely take all the concepts that are practical and use like the online resources to really learn about it but when it comes to more like deeper topics like learning about like like just like more fundamental theories on like computer science or maybe going deep into physics or mathematics i still believe like a, a school like a school-wide system of like having a community based around that is still super important. So now, do you remember how we met in some of our conversations? Because, you know, I have a very good memory. So I can, you know, I can kind of recite them, but I'm going to put that burden on you. And I could be wrong, too, right? I, I have one memory of how we met. So like um, I was working, I think I was like, I was I was like sitting with my laptop and it, yeah. it was near. A Where were you near sitting? Near Where were you sitting? Um, Do you remember where you were sitting? It was near the treadmills near the basement. I think near the gym where where we. That wasn't the treadmill. That was the thing I was about to work on, and you said you were right there. Yeah, yeah. And I was impressed that you were doing your work. Is actually what happened. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then and then you asked me like you. I think you we talked about like AI. Like I was like coding up some like AI application yeah, using yeah. Like, Google's new library. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you, I was like, I was like, I think I was pitching it to you. I'm like, I'm like, this could like analyze like objects and like tell you what yeah, it is. Yeah. No, I thought I thought it was awesome, and I remember what you had showed me then, and uh, and then I remember you kind of abandoning it at some point, not too far. What did that thing do? Now it's it's crazy because I just said I have a good memory, and I'm like, what was that? Yeah, so like basically, so I was I was like just like hacking around with Swift and stuff like iOS and Swift, and like like this is when the iPhone eight just came out. And um, so so the iPhone eight had this like way to like like basically a way to like use like AI ML processors. So they had this one thing called the Inception V three model that was by Google that just like all like in in simple terms it just like could analyze any like a water bottle and tell you that it's a water bottle that's like with like zero point eighty percent like accuracy. And so I just I was just using that and like seeing what I could build on top of that and seeing if I could like kind of like tune the whole model to like be more precise to like something more interesting like a skin like maybe skin diseases so i could like analyze like a picture of eczema and tell you what type of eczema so that was like the initial plan but then i just i just got completely bored with it i was just like like i, I it wasn't something that i was really like down to work on like just skin diseases i was just yeah, like okay I'm yeah. gonna, like, I seem but to it was, yeah but it was awesome so i remember and um and then i want you to tell people about your travels because it's so funny and i remember when you came back so I remember our first conversations, and then I remember we continued to speak, uh, and we were speaking about Seneca. Did you ever read Seneca? Remember, I kept yeah, on yeah. telling you about that. We were, we were always like we were just like huge on like I think we connected on like stoicism and everything, and um, just I remember telling you that I have like memento mori like tattooed on my like forearm, and then like everything like that. And then I think over that we were just like talking. You were telling me about like how like in Wall Street. No, 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 no. no. Did you read Seneca? Yeah, I do. Which which ones did you read? Do you um, read letters? Read, or? Um, so the more more so not, not really Seneca, more just on Stoicism. I love like um just like yeah. meditations, the classic the classic Silicon Valley like cop out like cop out to like Stoicism. Yeah, meditations. Now you got to read you uh from Marcus Aurelius, or was it just kind of like a composite? Yeah, yeah, that's really okay. So they're different. Um, they're different because I think that Seneca uh, letters to Lucilius is really helpful because there's so much good rhetoric within it and there's so much good advice that's within it. So, and uh, between the rhetoric and the kind of the good advice and it's, it's just, it's just remarkable. And on the shortness of life. So just like, just like before, just like old times, it's like old times. I'm going to nag you about that, but it's really a good book. Yeah, I think I think I did read shortness of life actually. Now that I remember, I, just, I, I it's, it's pretty short uh, like in general. Like so, it is. Like the whole it is. Yeah, it's a short book because come on. Uh, but it, it, it was, it's, been, it's been very helpful in my life, and I learned that book much too late. So one of the things that I'm so impressed with, so many of the I hate calling you guys kids, but young people, right? Uh, uh, no, we're all kids. We're all just kids acting like adults. <laughs> Okay. All right. I can take that. Oh, uh, not me though. Not me. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're Adam, you're a kid at heart. You're, you're a complete kid. Like you're like, you're like super curious and inquisitive. So. Yeah. 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 I'm definitely that. So I remember I was very impressed also because I was telling you what I was doing with Rand Corp and I was telling you what I was doing with some of the uh, linguistic companies I was working with. And uh, you might even notice now, cause I was discussing with you at that time, how language was going to be changing and how they were going to be subtracting words out. Uh, and here we are. And uh, that there was a lot of technology that goes on in the background of that, deciding what words and then kind of how they would influence each other, which kind of sucks, but that's what we were doing. 
that company got sold, worked out really well. And then I remember we were discussing supercomputer, supercomputing yeah. and quantum. Yeah. And quantum computing. And like the next time I saw you, you're like an expert on it. Yeah. I was like, cause like you inspired me to read all upon it. So I was just like, just reading on like, just like, just uh, in, in just knowledge of it. Cause I, the thing about me as I fall in these rabbit holes, so I was just like falling into a rabbit. Like remember last time I was talking about like CRISPR and the gene and everything like that. So just these rabbit holes that I fall into. And then I just fell into this whole rabbit hole quantum and like just supination, just learning about like, like different, like qubits and everything. Like it's just, it's a fascinating concept and just, just, just the impact it would have on general banking and RSA algorithms. Oh, and everything. Everything. Well, you can't have space force without quantum. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of part of that also, but you have quantum teleportation. You have a lot of interesting things. And several years ago, there were skeptics yeah, uh, yeah, who yeah. thought that it would never kind of, uh, that it was just hype. Basically, they thought it was just more v venture capital hype. And we're going to talk about Amazon too. Um, yeah. They thought it was just venture capital hype. And then here we are where China's already mounting from what they say. Maybe they're not truthful about it. But yeah. they're mounting a uh, quantum radar on uh, people's uh, on their navy, so right. you're not going to be able to look, to keep these uh, ships mm -hmm. in cislunar right. orbit without uh, data links and a whole bunch of really interesting things. And the only way you're really going to be able to do that and also kind of ward off foes and friend or foe systems is going to be with quantum space force. I'm going to skip around a little bit, but I've got some questions for you. But before anything begins. Who is America's greatest actor? Um, it, it has to, it, so it, it has to be someone that's really good at method acting, right? Like someone yeah. that like has someone like because like a lot of like there's 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 two quick like actors are just like any other artist. There's like two two like types yes. of that come yes. out there. Like, there's there's so this base you're right on track. You're right on track. Keep going with that. This, this is so who is America's? Who is America? Okay, it's a tie between. Okay, you, you're gonna you're gonna hate me, but I think it's a tie. I, I would say Tom Cruise. I would say Tom Cruise. <laughs> sure. You're just saying that. No, no, just just be. If you say America, if you say on like like. Okay, a hold on a second. You're just saying that, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying. You're that. just I saying really that like to Tom make Gun. me happy, like it's to give me the warm and fuzzy. You're just telling me that. Like Top Gun, like Top Gun and Vanilla Sky are truly like some of the greatest movies like out there, and just like the acting, like when you look at the emotional acting in Vanilla Sky, I would definitely say that that's a really like, like, like one of like Tom Cruise's top performances, and just top, you can't go wrong with Top Gun, like that's like an Nancy, American. Nancy just came in here, Nancy. You see, what did I tell you? It's true. It's true. I mean, yeah. Tom Cruise is like a bit like. I would say like okay, which like genius is not insane, right? So like I think like Tom Cruise does have like some like some quirks to him. But okay, like, name some quirks. Name some quirks. I, I mean like the the whole movie like American Psycho was based upon like Tom. Now, hold on a second. That was that was that was Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale. So Christian Bale like he based his character persona on Tom Cruise. Like you're right. <laughs> you see, you know that you know the truth. That's so awesome that you know the truth. Yeah. So. Yeah. So don't just, don't all actors do that with Tom Cruise? <laughs> right? they, they do, yeah. Yeah. So um, who is America's greatest, uh, who is America's finest diplomat? Finest diplomat? Yes. Dennis Rodman. For sure, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. No. Dennis Rodman is not our fun. He's a good diplomat. Honestly, he is good. What he did with what he did with Korea, with North Korea was awesome. I thought that was really awesome. Uh, you know, he didn't get enough, he didn't get enough appreciation for his his desire to bring peace yeah, to the yeah. world. My whole thing on like so oh, he's number he's number two. I'm I'll give you number two. Who's number one? Just say it. You're you're thinking too much about it. You gotta just let it go. Number one diplomat. I have I really don't know. I, I'll just I'll tell you who it is because I want to get to these questions. It's Tom Cruise again. Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah, say. I would, okay. I would agree with that. But okay. Dennis, oh, cool. So we're we're gonna get we're gonna skip around on that, right? Because people have questions, and I've got questions for you. And because I want to respect everyone's time, we're gonna do a kind of like a lightning round. Okay. Cool. Amazon. Cool. Yes or no? Amazon. Yes or no? Uh, yes. I say Amazon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because do you, remember, do you remember we had this conversation before? I, I just want to say yes, just just like just because I want to see your 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 reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again. Do you remember at the gym we had this conversation? Because yeah, yeah we did. You, you were very impressed with with Jeff Bezos and Amazon, and you know me, I'm like uncontrollable, so I just like went off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. 
we had like a one hour conversation. You were like, you were like one hour just like telling me. I mean, I agree so much. Like a lot of the practices, but like, like everyone would love to be like an angel investor in Amazon, right? Like no one, no one would be like, oh, I, I would hate that. Like so, it's just like when something gets too big to like for like in general in society, everyone would always be like finding like there will always be things said about that. But it's just that when things get too big, it gets uncontrollable, and there's always gonna be other players that come in. So like other players that don't have the best intentions. So that's why I just say like, yeah, Amazon is good. Like you would have, like we all appreciated Amazon in like 95 or 90. I wasn't born then, but like I, I know like a lot of people definitely did appreciate like someone starting like another dot com company that took off and became successful. OK, so the answer to that was no. Just so you know, so you couldn't. So I mean, uh, write that I mean, down. Sure, sure, sure. No. OK, Jeff Bezos. Do we like him? Um, now we talked about Amazon because I remember that you were you were kind of a fan of Amazon, right? And you were thought that they were so incredible. You actually like Jeff Bezos, and I'm wondering if you reconsider it all, like how long you are. Yeah, not really, not really a fan of Bezos. Not really. Like I mean, his he had some like in in his early actually not nah, yeah fuck Jeff Bezos. Okay, <laughs> Dark City. Did you see that movie? I haven't seen it. You should see that movie. I'll see it. I'll add it to my list of things to see. No, you really should. Because what's happening right now, what that movie is about is a, like you go to sleep one person and you wake up another person. Literally, there's like these weird type of people. And I don't want to ruin it for you. But you go to sleep as Jim and you, and you go to sleep in a one bedroom apartment and your name is Jim. And then you, you know, when you wake up, you're in a mansion and your name is Paul. Right. So it's just really interesting it's just a really interesting movie and it makes me think about the way we are now so covid do you wear a mask uh when i'm when i'm outside i when i'm inside buildings i do wear a mask when i'm outside walking i don't i don't I, to be honest i really don't wear a mask okay yeah okay well i don't wear a mask at all because that's kind of like my resistance but honestly because you look like you were hesitating there for a second like i might call the cops on you or something so yeah. i mean the whole, like, honestly do you wear a mask I, I, I wear it indoors just to like get my coffee or, or just going off to like, yeah, oh, I, 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 indoors? I, I, I okay. like the lattes. I, like you always see how like the lattes hit the millennials and then it's like the yeah. funniest thing ever. But, yeah, like, but that know, won't, that won't affect you. That's uh that's kind of like a white type of thing. There's something inside of us that like we drink the lattes and we go crazy, man. Crazy. <laughs> I'm telling so, you guys. You, you, don't, home, you don't have that gene. You don't have that gene. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Andrew Yang, yes or no? um we talked about this before like um yeah i just like there's this only policy i liked was just like you, just like you guy in general like look like something i liked a lot but other, other than that i hate it i just don't like i just don't think the guy is like like he claims to be some dude in tech like he says that oh i'm this guy like i was i was a tech founder some shit like that and i'm just like i like no one really like if you talk to anybody like around the place you worked at he was never like something like he was never really in tech to say in tech he just like has like a label around it just to, like a piece of tech bros and stuff being like yeah hey, i'm this like tech guy coming in for you guys but like in general like the only thing good good on his end was just ubi like that's all i like kind of respected in a way yeah so i had i think you're right my recall i had dinner with him and in advance of that dinner um you know, I'm very familiar with VAT taxes and there's a lot of consideration that I give to these things because they affect domiciles and where we're going to put businesses and a whole bunch of other things. And uh, in advance of that, I knew that he was going to talk to me about UBI and, and I knew the what would have to come as a consequence of UBI. So I had a great dinner with him and I know the people who financed him and I know the people that kind of uh, were maybe like the godfathers behind him and they're, they're friends of mine also. But Adam, the end Father, you're the godfather behind Andrew Yang. Okay. The answer, the answer to, to that question about Andrew Yang is also no. Okay. So just so you know this, uh, people have questions. Uh, first, before that, I'm just going to ask you about Space Force. Uh -huh. Yes or no? Yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, what would you do in Space Force? Because there's going to be a lot of different jobs. Like, what would you want to do? I would, I would love to like actually like be I I I'll, like I would love to like be adventurous and actually be in like like in like some of the capsules that are actually exploring going out there and like kind of being oh. that, that seems like a pretty cool thing like besides like all like the like bone deterioration and all types of other like like negative side effects other than that would be cool and I, I don't really mind too much of the negative side effects life short anyway just go out there. there's gonna be so many awesome things going on I mean the smartest kids I know that I speak with you know, regularly, not that I know, well, that I come in contact with frequently, um, are mm -hmm. doing things yeah. to advance their space force career, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then there's people who yeah. don't, 
There's people that are just kind of neglectful of it. And it's going to be so many jobs. What I'm excited for, and particularly for people of your age, is that you're going to have lots of new startups. So there's going to be a huge ecosystem that has to be built because just as much as Amazon kind of owns the world at this point and Google owns the world and a few other companies, they actually, as crazy as it is, they don't have the internal capacity to be able to manage all that innovation because there's such a high rate of failure that's going to occur um, that it's just it's just easier for them to go out and invest in 100 companies and give them each a million dollars and then say, we'll check in with you in five years than for, him, yeah. for them to have active day to day. But you're going to have these companies going from a $5 million valuation, you know, to a billion dollar value in no time, a hundred billion. It won't even make a difference. Okay. So uh, somebody had questions about the New York city incubator scene. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, there was like, like the whole like thing about incubators in general, like there's, I was reading, I, I was reading this one thing on just Y Combinator and, and people like, like downing on them. And the Y Combinator is like basically like the granddad of like all incubators. And I think it's more, I just think incubators are just bad in general. Like that's my that's my whole take on it. It's more for tech climbers, people that just like want to climb up in tech. Like they would they just like it's like MBA students, people that it's just mostly around that and just signaling. Signaling is a large part of most incubators. So yeah, if you want to find a way to signal correctly, like try getting to Y Combinator or like 500 startups or something like that. But other incubators are good if you're like low on cash. If you're kind of like if if maybe like you need a way to like quickly bootstrap and get your thing out there. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter like if it's a cult like personality in the incubator or anything. Because you're just trying to win. That's like all like startups are about. You're not trying to like like you're not you're not trying to worry about like what like branding you have or what this you have. You just want to win. So that if you have that mindset all the time, that's all you need to care about. So if the incubator helps you win, I think definitely go for it. Okay. So, uh, so right here, because Nancy helped me write some questions for you, right? The, the one like question number, I guess two, cause I went out of order 12 or something was, uh, names a book I asked you to read and Seneca. And I, you let me down a little bit. Cause you know, uh, it's cool. Yeah. I was, I was yeah. reading something else. I was reading the little prince. Have you, have you ever checked out the little prince before? And then, and then I, I balanced out the little prince because it's fiction and I balanced that out with guns, germs and steel. So it's like a really good book. Oh, yeah. I read that book. There's other books of that type that I can recommend as well. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that book. I'm very interested in complexity. You know, one of the things I enjoy about kind of Space Force, and I hate to just use it, say it so simply because it's such a broad type of thing, but, uh, and I enjoy about India, and I'm going to discuss this in investments a little bit later in a different day, but uh, is about how innovation is becoming so uh, expensive and about how a lot of the uh, low hanging fruit uh, problems have been solved. And now what we've got is uh, a space force that requires some really high hanging fruit, big team uh, innovation that's highly complex. So uh, yeah. I like that book, but I think that there's others that can kind of delve a little bit uh, differently into the complexity of social economic and you know, a whole bunch of systems views. I thought that was, I thought that was really good um there there's others and there's a lot of lectures there's even uh, a good friend actually has a lot of lectures on youtube because this is what he does and we've discussed it relative to india and how i see downstream innovation happening in the world okay um definitely what are you gonna do india is definitely like long on my like list of countries to look out for yeah so where the world is you know gonna kind of be split up between us and china uh yeah. it really depends on what our what our students are doing i think they're uh they're misallocating their own youth a little bit with the wrong type of education. I prefer what you're doing. I think what you're doing makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's always going to be opportunities. Um, so yeah. Um, I just want to respond to a couple of questions about VAT taxes because somebody asked them, somebody, uh, Neil Quinn asked me, do I, do I really think there, there will see a VAT tax? Yeah, I really do think we're going to see a VAT tax. I'm not pleased at all about it. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed over the last several years is that, news has become so siloed so you know um we don't know what's happening in germany we don't know the protests that are happening here and there we know nothing of their political kind of uh intrigues that are going on overseas so our friends overseas in europe are trying to warn america as kind of urgently as they can how the destructive uh qualities of vat tax and green carbon taxes and all these other type of things but americans don't get to hear it so i i per perhaps you could say they've been kind of uh geographically deplatformed.
I don't know if that's the proper, I've got to think of a better way of expressing that, but we just don't hear about all the riots and the protests that are going on about taxes and the consequences it has to the agricultural industry and the energy industry in Europe. That, you know, And now all those people have been locked up, right? Because now they can't protest anymore. So here they were getting screwed with taxes and now they don't have any uh, method to appeal because you know, you're locked up in your house. Um, so I want to make sure, so let me ask you some really good questions. Um, what are you working on now? Right now, by the way. Yeah. So I, I was like, I was just like, um, kind of just experimenting with the different like ideas for like, uh, companies to start. Uh, there's like two things that I was like really inspired by. Um, when I was in down in Japan in Tokyo, um, I was really inspired by the whole like vending machine scene down there. So like, I just feel like, like vending machines, especially post in a post COVID world where like all things will be outside and stuff. Vending machines will be a cool, like good small tap, like, like sustainable, like <laughs> for, for, for all the, for all the Gen Z and millennials, vegan, vegan bowls, vegan salad bowls. So um, that'd be cool. And also um, a mental health space. Cause I just think the whole like mental health space is just super like underrated and, and and just and just like building something around that, especially for a younger generation, is really cool and something in my like plans. And I could like quote up something like MVP fast to see like like I have all these like hypotheses. Like, can I like like the question is, can I build a space for like the whole mental health? Um, okay, so but I want I want you to narrow it down, right? Just yeah. as if we were having this conversation in the gym, and I get the direction of what you want to do, and we all want to do good things in the world. But in order to accomplish those good things, it it requires money. So. In five years, I want you to have a big company. What's that big company gonna do? Honestly, honestly, I was really thinking about like the whole ghost kitchen slash like um, like so like pushing aside the whole mental health. So that was just, I was getting carried away with a bunch of ideas, but like the the main thing that I'm putting like a lot of effort and time into is really like like finding ways that like how like just like, like simply put like just vending machines that are super dope and like selling like super cool like. Food that's just like in a broad term, like healthy and sustainable, and, and all over the city, like found almost through an app, and it'll be just super. Dope okay. So now, what you need to do is whatever that is, right? You need to transfer that to paper because it sounds to me like it's still something that's circulating in your head, and you've got to be able to kind of visually grasp it. So you've got to have that cognition of transferring it from here, and then uh, the cognition to put it onto a paper, and then you're transferring it there, and then you've got that visual quality of being able to look at it. Because then your brain is going to kind of synthesize and it's going to, as you're looking at it, it's already going to start prioritizing and sequencing it. And it's already going to be introducing um, a lot uh, kind of, uh, it's going to become kind of more robust and more complete. And then you'll have other questions. And so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to nag you about that too. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's like really good. I mean, this whole thing I've been thinking of just like for like the past, like, let's say like one month, just like nothing, like it's not been like completely solidified, but it's always like on the side. And when it comes to like career wise, I've been just like, like contracting at a bunch of spots, just like just stuff. So just like quickly get paid and stuff like that. Don't become a contractor. This is very important. So I'm going to give you other advice too, is there's going to be a kind of a caste system in America, right? There's going to be the 1099s that are going to be forever looking for work. And a lot of their time is going to be expended looking for their next job, right? And they're not going to have, because of laws that are passed in California and other laws that are going to be occurring as well, they're not going to have a, a tremendous amount of security. And they lobbed, they, they, they were protesting on behalf of it. So now that they got it, they may not enjoy it. Uh, you know, they may not uh, like what they wanted so much. But so there's going to be a caste system. There's going to be those people who are um, uh, 1099s mm -hmm. and uh, we can call them the plebs. I hate to say it, but... Uh, it's a great living for some, but for the tech kids, I don't think it's going to be great. For other people that are accountants, lawyers, and there's just a whole bunch of developers for short-term contracts and kind of just piecemeal type of work, right now it's going to be good. In another year, two, three years, it's going to be good. But then it's quickly going to deteriorate to a cash system where you have the contractors, right, who have little job security, um, and uh, the company does not want to bring them on as W-2s because they introduce too much risk, uh, headline risk, legislative risk. There's just too much complexity to it. And then there's going to be the W-2 employees. And those W-2 employees are going to work for Amazon. They're going to work for the megacorps because everything is being cartelized. And those megacorps, you know, you saw Antifa protesting in Georgetown or something, right, where all the politicians live. They're displacing the politicians. So the Amazon 
so those antifa is kind of like a phalanx for the megacorps i mean they're being pointed in a direction right um yeah. and yeah. so the megacorps are those w2 employees who actually work for those megacorps are going to be the new american upper caste they're going to be displacing all of the dc elite they're pushing them out of their houses right now they can't afford to buy the houses that these amazon kids can buy so um yeah. it's going to be really interesting so two routes then either build your own company and rely on the on those contractors yourself as a way to arbitrage labor right or find a megacorp either pitch them your idea for a startup and ask for a million bucks which you're very charming you can certainly do or uh just go there i learned all the charm from you yeah 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 but uh I, I, and i learned all the hair from you okay so uh, I want to make sure that I addressed all the questions. So let me just make sure Nancy wrote me a list and I've got bad eyes. So it, it's even too little for me. There's, there's one question that kind of caught my attention. Um, Ball Gates said, um, can we hear what is the best crypto to buy? Um, I just want to say Dogecoin. Definitely buy Do Dogecoin is, I don't know, Dogecoin is underrated. Um, Ball Gates won. So. <laughs> Do you really think so? I'm just kidding. Uh, but on a serious note, definitely. Yeah, Dogecoin is cool just because I love like the, I think, I think like the internet goes off weird, um, weird and funny and creative things. So like Dogecoin has like some potential just, just because of how weird and creative and quirky it is. And the internet gravitates to anything weird and quirky. So, and if, and if, and if, and if a currency is going to be based on the internet. So yeah, Dogecoin would definitely be the future of currencies and Bitcoin always, always Bitcoin. Okay, so I want to make sure I, an I answer because these are really interesting and they're so off topic. And, and then we'll, we'll close with these because they're such great questions. Is um, what is the most memorable thing someone ever told you? Um, let's see, um, I think it was just like that every second that's passing by, we're just we're dying. That was just, just that it just puts things into perspective. Okay, well, I hope they give you uh. So the other advice, which is to just live every second, there's no accounts because otherwise you're just going to wait that moment out. So I assume they also contributed that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just like thinking about that puts things into a now perspective because everyone's just like, oh, you're going to die. You have a couple years, but then a couple years, you just wait it out. But like when you say every second, you just start questioning everything. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, like okay, there's no yeah. time left. There was a watch that they sold and I wanted to get it. I don't know why I didn't get it, but it counted. It's, it was like a hundred year clock a watch and then it counted time backwards so it gave you a sense however you said it it gave you a sense of how much time is left and it was just really interesting so i'm going to close with this question if you had a billboard for a year what would it say i had a billboard for a year um okay let me think let me think um so i was i asked this to a friend yesterday and we were having this conversation and then it made me think like probably it would just be like You think? Um, okay, it's a tough question. I didn't know how I would answer it as well, but I thought it was a really, it was a really fun question. Well, I'm just, said, my, friend, my friend says, "Did I tell you what she said that she would put on the billboard?" Yeah, sure. She said that she would have a company, right? That's spelled. That's called D I Q U E. And then, <laughs> so she would say, "Suck a suck a dick" on the billboard. Oh my <laughs> oh, bro, you're so wild you're so wild you're bringing out that element right because it, your your twitter thing sometimes your old twitter names was just amazing um so i want to make i want to make sure that i'm just responsive and i'm just going to scroll through and um let me see if there's anything that i've neglected to ask you because i think i went through my list so um i think i think that's it i think we had such a good time and i miss you man so it's so wonderful to see you can you tell everybody the story can you tell everybody about the story that you, and you're breaking up a little bit, you're, the visuals of you are breaking up a little bit. Is it, is it good now? Uh, it'll be okay. You know what, I was gonna bother you, I was gonna bother you with you, uh, you know, telling your, uh, telling your travel story when you stayed at the hostel, but I'm not gonna do it because uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say it real fast. So basically, basically what happened is um, Adam, like Adam convinced me that I should just start traveling, which was the best thing in my life. Like I wouldn't take any, like any of my travels, I would never like push it away. I, I think like this completely changed me, formative years of my life, formative months, <laughs> formative years. But basically I, I traveled to a hostel and I was in, I was just like in some really shady house in Toronto. <laughs> it was like really bad, like it was like really cheap and really shady. 
and then after that after toronto i was down in india and then in india i was it was i was getting in this hostel vibe and i basically picked up lice <laughs> i had this really bad case of lice and yeah. then i just had i had to shave my like i got a really crazy haircut i look super different and, yeah you and, did because when you left to go there you had even longer hair than you've got now your hair was wild yeah right? it was crazy I was like, and I was then the next time i saw you when you came back your hair was almost like a crew cut you look like a little kid I did, right? It was crazy. Yeah. It was like I went from cult leader to like to a school kid. <laughs> you went from uh you went from a like the cult leader to like the person who's in the cult, like worshiping the cult leader. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy. It was, it, was, it was a downgrade. Don't worry, but the cult the cult leader vibes are coming back and it's gonna start. Oh, it's gonna be stronger good. than ever. good. I'm so happy to hear that because I think that's a good thing, right? Okay, so Thank you so much. Uh, it's really been so, so wonderful spending time with you, man. I'm just so happy to see you, and I'm happy that I, we, you and I got a chance to share uh, the enjoyment of uh, our company with uh, with everybody else, and hopefully they enjoyed it as well. So, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys, everybody, for all the cool comments and everything. And thank you, Adam, man. This was, like, awesome. Like, I always yeah. love you. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, guys. Take care.